Good evening, everybody. This is Mike Monty, one half of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. We're produced out of Indie Music TV in New York. That's Ron Conkham in New York. Yes, again, that's Indie Music TV. You can also catch us on RTF Sports Network. That's RTF Sports Network, the number one growing streaming sports network on the air today. Catch us every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Yes, we're their anchor show. And catch our rerun on a morning drive time from 10 to 11 a.m. You could also catch us on the Monty and the Faro YouTube page, the Facebook Live Monty and the Faro page, Twitch TV Monty and the Faro page, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, or any streaming network. We're on it. You can find us anywhere. Also catch us on New York Cable, Channel 115, every Tuesday from 8.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Also catch us Saturday mornings on Channel 115 from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. And catch us Saturday morning at 1.30 a.m. on Channel 20. Soon we'll be coming to Amazon, so catch us there also. We want to thank everybody for the support. And again, please catch us every Thursday, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., Monty DeFaro, Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, new, old, endangered, and let's have a little fun. Talk to you soon. This is Gangrel, the Vampire Warrior, and you're fanging and banging with Monty and DeFaro. <laughs> to grow up and be a man. Come on. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Monty and Faro, best uh, special Sunday edition. So I lost my days. Ah, well, it is special. Special ed. Um, we just got <laughs> done with Billy and Jack Keynes, and now we're back with none other than WCW icon, um, Disco Inferno. Whoops. All right. Hey, How are Disco. you, brother? How are Glad you? Glad to have you, man. And to the left of you is uh, the writer for the gorilla position, Mr. Jim Phillips. Oh, Jim. You, brothers. How are you doing today? Good, man. Thanks for being here. Just keep your distance. Uh, Jim might be marking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Out, slight marking out. Well, well, that's all right. I'm marking out over here, so all he's right. getting it from all areas. So, anyway, so thank okay. you for coming Stereo. on to our show. Yeah. We greatly appreciate it, both of you gentlemen. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Go ahead, Farrow. You're on, my friend. All right, Disco. Let's start right at the beginning. You what guys me- got, you, 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 you prepped a lot for this, huh? Absolutely. Yes. Nice. We are. We are. Yeah. I'm very psyched to have you. Nice. We are Absolutely. always very prepped. For, yeah. You know, it's yeah. It, it, we take it pretty seriously. We come prepared. You guys come out of your own time. Yeah. You come visit yeah. the station. Well, it's like the po- you know the the, the the podcasting. We don't you know. Yes, just get everybody gets on the headsets. We just get right. we just talk. You, you know, just whatever. Do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like right. we don't prep or you know. So right, this is we, we know some things. We want a couple things that we want to talk about. Just pull up on the internet. Yeah, no, I took a couple very, hours. Very professional. Go, very took professional. a couple hours going over it with Mike. You know, in anticipation of your arrival. Right. So right. let's. I don't, I don't think you've ever been called professional before. Me? Yeah. No. Well, I've been called lots the of first things. First, I'm professional. All right, go ahead. Uh, let's just go to the very beginning. What makes Disco Inferno decide to get into pro wrestling? Uh, just honestly, there's really no big major story um, other than uh, the f- my f- soccer coach growing up um, was friends of our family, still friends of our family for years. Okay, was doing the uh, was was a travel agent for for the NWA back when Ole Anderson was running it and stuff like that. And, and that's um, a nice coincidence. Yeah. So okay. uh, so when I finished college, um, the the week I got the week I was done, I tried out for wrestling. I never looked back. I just tried. He goes, "You want to try out?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah sure." Because I was, I was a fan, you know, and I, that was what I wasn't. I was in shape a little bit, you know. So, but, but I knew um, when I went to the tryout, I was very, very lucky in that, that there was a lot of things that, like, just from watching on TV and playing around with my friends and stuff, and everything that I picked up very quickly. Like, I hit the ropes right the first time, 
first time I ever did it. And they were like, wow, that's, you know, so uh, it was... Um, How about your first bump? How'd that go? It's all right. You know, okay. I mean, I learned, but I, I only, tr- you know, this is what I find fascinating is that, uh, you know, I grew up watching wrestling. I grew up watching, um, uh, in Atlanta, they had a thing called Joe Petticino mm. had this seven hours of wrestling, eight o'clock on Saturday nights on Channel 36 in Atlanta. And they would show seven hours from seven different parts of the, the country, AWA, Mid-South, just whatever it was, you know. And so I watched that. Um, I watched Mid South Mid South wrestling. Mid South wrestling. They had, but they had Watts. They had you know, That's great. Program. So I watched. I uh, heard about that. It was a variety. Yeah, and I watched um, the WWF. Sure. Back then I watched Tuesday Night Titans. Sure. And I watched WC. Okay. And I watched NBC Saturday Night. So I was watching. It's a lot of wrestling. For like, man. Yeah, for, yeah. like for like probably oh, about shit. eight nine years of my life, I was watching. 13, 14 hours of wrestling every week from all over the place. Well, I'm just saying I was a big fan, but I I was went to watch that much. The one thing that I was that I did was is like I would usually to watch all that. You got to fast forward through most of the matches just to the finish and stuff, and that's so that's like I'd get the storylines and the I'd watch all the interviews and watch you know this stuff. Watch story, but but um, but when I got into wrestling. I this this to me is what what I find fascinating is that like you know some some people either either you got it or you don't right and like the way today's wrestling they've like the WWE's built a factory down there basically yeah. the performance sure. center, you know so it's like but uh but I you know I trained for five weeks twice a week and I was done I was, I was five five weeks to tra- ten training sessions so and I was ready I was ready to go wrestle so you didn't find training to be too difficult no not at all because I picked up the nuances and like, I had a lot of you know I could throw a good punch kit you know I, I I picked up a lot of this stuff and back then you know we guys weren't doing dives over the top you know so sure. I knew the, the head you know the basics of chain wrestling I pick I, I just picked up everything very quickly and just they were like you you're ready you know so I can't I, I find it sh- strange and like uh, Terry Taylor who was like one of my early you know he was one of the guys that took Bender's wing early on you know he never even trained to wrestle really they just st- stuck him in the ring and he just learned as he, as he goes on uh-huh. you know in front of people and, and stuff he was so, outstanding in the ring so it's like okay. I, 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 today I just find it extremely difficult that if somebody's been training wrestling for a year like and they haven't picked it up yet I'm like you're never, you're, it ain't going to happen. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like the, the, the people that like, that if, if you love wrestling and you're passionate about it, you should kind of like know what to do before you start training and the training should not take that long. Sure. You know? Yeah. And basic that, instincts uh, have to count for ba- something. Basic instincts. Sure. And I'm like, you know, I've, uh, and I just, you know, I, I just think maybe I'm an outlier. I mean, I am an outlier, I guess, compared to like the thing today, but I just can't believe that, that, some people have to train so long to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that's mm-hmm. you know, two years. Some of those guys have been in the, in the, in the, the performance center down there. Like, what, you know, what, what, what have you, what are you ever in trouble with? You, you know, like, you know, I think so. a lot. I think a lot of times they try to force the issue, right? You know, just like baseball nowadays, they they they, they don't really even use agents anymore, right? They have mm-hmm. you have to be six foot. You have to have this. You have that. The, yeah. This arm length. I think. It's all metrics. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So probably in a wrestling. Are they doing thing, that with wrestling? I would now? think so. Like you got to oh, look a certain that's way. So that's, well, this, right? this is this is what I find is like, like the factory, like he was talking about. Here's, here's, here's the drafting thing. positions. Here's the thing. Right. Lex Luger and the Ultimate Warrior are are uh, are outliers. They didn't really like wrestling when they got into it. They just okay. got into it and like, oh, here we do, you know, we, right. we can do Let, this. Let's yeah. make some money and go. Yeah. yeah right. So. Um, but uh, there's just something about what I call is like having your head and your feet together out there in the ring. It's like your your whole body, from your head to your feet, mm-hmm. need to kind of like know what to do because it's, it's difficult. You can get sure, hurt. You know? Sure, absolutely. And, uh, and it's funny that I just see like I see some guys they put on TV today, and like you see them wrestle. I'm like, this guy's head and his feet are not set straight. He's having trouble out there. So it's he like, was. You know, a- he, doesn't, he doesn't look natural. It looks these guys look kind of robotic, like they're struggling through. Their learning process and they're thinking too much of what they're supposed to be doing, as opposed to it's just it's just an instinct. You just go out there and do it. So you, as you a know. professional, are actually seeing this where they're being put on television, and some of them aren't even ready. They're not even close to wow. being ready, and that's and that's like, uh, Oy. you know, it's fascinating to me that like, you know, and then I'm watching this, and I'm like, you know, just it just looks like in this this you know, but back then is like we we called in the ring. You learn to call it in the ring. You learn to go out there like you do. You be the, the dressing room is about be on opposite sides of the arena. Sometimes you want to get, get to talk to the guys. You know, mm. now we're in the age of like everything in wrestling is scripted from top to bottom, from the time you start training to the time you cut your pro. Like everything, 
You know, and uh, is this and good or bad? Horrible, because yeah. like you can see as a fan, you're watching on TV and you're like scripted. You can tell this guy is thinking about what he's supposed to be Plastic. saying instead of just right. Instead yeah, of, and I call I call yep. it wood, but, but, like but, acting. Kevin Nash gave me the word. It's called wooden. Let's go back. Wooden, you, Let, you're wooden. Nice. You're just like you're not. You, okay. don't, you know. So let's go back to your training. Though. So mm-hmm. you had the wrestling. Then. Yeah. How about the stick work? Did you work on a lot of stick work back then? Too? I was good. I was decent on the mic. So yeah. here's, here's did, did they put thing. a lot of work behind that? Not really, because I was always cutting. But, you know, I was, you know, I grew up watching Dusty Rose, Piper, Flair. You know, uh, did they let you be your own man on the mic? Or did Kinda, they? Yeah, like... Oh no, back then you would, you, you had to. Right. Nobody was teaching you how to right. tell do promos. You your just promos had, weren't scripted. You, you were this. This is where your artistic compression came upon. Not not in your matches. It was in your, right. you know, your, you know, your personality and sure. stuff. Everything. You know. So it's like, uh, um. Yeah, it was, it was good in the mic. And the, the one thing I was always, I never had any trouble with is when I wrestled in front of a live crowd for the first time, I was, I, I've never, ever been nervous out there. It's weird. It's like the, the bigger good. the audience, mm-hmm. the more engaged I was. The yeah. smaller the audience, it was kind of like, no you know. Butterflies, but, huh? Right. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, I mean, I, I you know, I, try, I, mean, I picked up training fast, just did, did it, and then I went through a few gimmicks. Typical indie crap, you know, and then uh, then Raven and I came up. I would met Raven and we came up with a you know bra- bra- brainstorm. Well, I we come up with the character, and we so just kind of like looked at Disco films. Inferno was formed with Raven. Yeah, Raven. Yeah, yeah, Raven. Yeah, Raven. Yeah, yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You, who came up with Disco Inferno? Was it? Well, Raven had a uh, a video of this guy named Doctor Johnny Fever, Johnny Holiday from okay. Calgary Championship Wrestling, who was doing kind of a disco gimmick. He did it for a very brief period of time. And all he did was go out there, just put a white jacket on, right? And just went out there and like you know, just but that's all he did. His right. ring entrance, he had a white jacket, and that that was the disco character. The rest is he had regular trunks on and everything. So and I was like, you know, he's not, the guy wouldn't do it anymore. So I was like, you know, I, I, how about the disco? The, the name was easy, the Disco Inferno, you know. Mm-hmm. Good, and just like I, I'll, I'll pattern it after the the way the honky tonk man works, and that mm. you know the honky tonk man does his little giving yeah. <laughs> at, at some point during the yeah, match. I'll just do my thing at that point during the match and watch you know when I'm getting heat and you know, and yeah. then so, so it was a very very easy gimmick to to do you know so. Since we're on the early days, how about some memories of the pre WCW days in brief stay in WWE? Uh, no, I was anything never like that. Did you no, ever have no, anything? No, 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 no. Went to the show. Went to a TV taping with uh, with with Wrath, who was uh, okay. Adam Bomb back then, who was a friend okay. of mine. So I went to one of the TV tapings of then, but I never like you know. So it never no. And um, was there was there ever a close call with Vince? Maybe no. any interest or anything? No, well, there was. Yeah, but back when I got fired from WCW, and they were like you know, okay, at the one point. But uh, how do you get to WCW? I just I I so. I so in the, in the, in the Indies, I was doing a couple of crappy games. I started doing Disco Inferno. Um, then I went to Me- Raven. Got me into Memphis. I went and did it for Lawler's territory for like five weeks. I don't think they they didn't like the game. I, they, they didn't like me. I was green, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I was having a little, you know, I, I was all right, but I was still an, an, an indie guy. Yeah, learning. So um, so I quit doing the gimmick. Then we had uh, basically I'd met Paige. Um, and Paige had told me, hey, well, well, why don't you do the disco character again? Then I met Jake Roberts through Paige. I'd drive Jake Roberts to shows. He would teach me how to work. Then I met Terry Taylor driving to the shows that Jake was going to. Then I met Terry Taylor, and Terry Taylor was working in the office at WCW and going back, you know, he's doing, back then he could freelance. So, uh, so they got me a tryout, and WCW needed to hire me on the spot. Because I had a good try with Chris Canyon. Nice. So what's and the what's the initial payday uh, being signed to? For thousand dollars a week. 50, 50, yeah, but, but the first pay per view I was on, that would go to eighty five thousand dollars. Okay, and if you're on the top four matches pay per view, it would be one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. That's my initial contract. But this is like man, making twenty bucks a match. Yeah. You know, back then. So yeah, I'm like, oh, that's it gives a lot of money back <laughs> so in ninety five. The know? travel is not and, that uh, bad in, in WCW yeah. either. Right. So. Um, uh, so yeah, that was my initial contract. Did you have any aspirations to become a major player in the heavyweight scene? Because ultimately, you were put in the cruiserweight division with WCW. Were you disappointed, or were you like, fine, no big deal? Oh, no, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care. No, just, you were good it, no matter what. Because I was a prof- I was a professional wrestler, meaning that I'm just get, I go out there and get paid to do what they tell right. me to do. You know, right. that's, that's the way I've always looked at it. Um, tell us some memories of th- that cruiserweight division. By yeah. the way, in mm-hmm. WCW during that time period, revolutionary, mm-hmm. yeah. amazing. Uh, any uh, memories you can share about with uh, working with Eddie Guerrero? Yeah, he was, he was the, the Eddie. Eddie's the best guy I've ever been in the ring with. Really, now? by far. Nice. It's like you know, he's 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 head and shoulders. I would say that Eddie Guerrero is the best performer, in ring performer that there's ever been. Wow. 
Wow. And I would say that Ric Flair uh, was the best experience I ever had in a ring. Because it was like Flair was good to you behind the scenes. Just curious. Good, yeah, always, always Excellent. cool. And uh, Eddie was, um, and it was funny too because we were, we knew these guys were coming in because uh, like everybody's you know they were on ECW. And everybody's talking about oh then they're gonna you know so so you started watching them you know and then they're they, you're watching the Super Juniors in Japan. They were doing that. So it was like the Mexicans, the Super Juniors, they were all this, you know the smaller guys. But Had they you were, been watching ECW? No, I was not at on all? ECW. But not you ECW had heard fan. about these guys going through ECW. Tape, you know, tape. But okay. I was not, I was not an ECW fan. How about Dean Malenko? Any thoughts on Dean? The unbelievable technical technician. Just like you know, he's him and Regal and all those guys. They were just like, oh, we, yeah, they they, they could they, they, just the way they the. the you know, he'd, he'd, yeah. he'd, were you were you nervous knowing they were coming in that you'd no, have to not you, you needed to step it up a no, little bit? Not no. at all, not at all. I, I was like, I, I was eager because like, well, I want to do, I want to do some of this stuff with these guys, you know. And um, yeah, but it was just uh, just a great crop of, of talent. You know, this is still the best. Of. They're they're they're, they're, they're bro, you, you talk about like like Eddie, Ray, Hoovy, Kidman. Um, this Kidman. You, you you go you go back and watch. Oh yeah, the WCW cruiserweight it's scene, insane. bro. They they blow they, like everybody. Like, oh, it's I, on Jericho. I mean, he Jericho was part of that too. Bro, mm-hmm. This is this is what frustrates me more than anything. Okay, in, in wrestling today, is that they're always the, the the wrestling fans and the fan base are kind of like they're very over praising the pro. You know, you know what? I mean, here's here's what I think it is. I, I don't think that it's yeah, an we have honest, an issue with that. It's it's an yeah. I don't think it's an on, there's an honest narrative in professional wrestling because like. Professional wrestling is not as good as it used to be. That's just that's, that's just a fact. Is you could just by, by, by the amount of people watching. It, okay, mm-hmm. back in our day, it was super hugely, ridiculously popular. Sure, right? We were, you know, then this is the way I, I describe it. Ratings that, were insane. Well, just this is put insane. in pers- put in perspective. Okay, this is what people don't understand about the ratings. Is that the amount of people that are watching wrestling combined on Monday nights was like ten million? You know, the, like the sure. combined rating was like ten or like Crazy. the numbers were very high. That's people watching wrestling on Monday night in that time slot. Cable TV, mm-hmm. okay. When Monday Night Football went onto ESPN and went onto cable, mm-hmm. that audience was the same. Yep. Okay, so we were neck and neck with football. <laughs> yeah. Okay, popularity <laughs> yeah. wise, you know, yeah. and like, as, as like a culture thing, oh and like that, you've seen the NFL go this I, well, way, think, and the, you know, right. I, I think you're aware there was one point where the NFL offered. Vince McMahon to move to, to, off a yeah. Monday to stay night. Away from yeah. oh, I didn't even know. I, I had no idea about Amazing. that. Yeah, yeah. That, Vince that, was feeling it like that, you know. that's that's like yeah. I mean, because that, so that's how popular it was, and that's when I put you put things in perspective. Amazing. And like you look at it today, it's like, bro, that's the error that we like. That's how popular we were. And so so it's like, so this is what drives me insane, is that everybody keeps talking about how like this. There's never been more talent in professional wrestling, and I'm like. <laughs> I mean, I just don't, I mean, no, no disrespect to the guys today. Right. Okay, but yeah. back then, I'm like, I'm like, look, we could get a pop from the crowd by grabbing a guy and punching him, right. and he's selling it because it looked real. That it took a bump. I go, what you guys have to do to, today to get pops yeah, from the crowd? Pop. You compared go to, I'm like, I'm like, miles, I, right. it's like you can that, That's right. like. How could you sit there and say that, like, you know, we could do so many more, like, we were better at the so simple, much more with less. Less is The simplest, less, yes, the simplistic yes. basic skills of professional wrestling are what people do, do not have today. Right. We had those basic skills back then, and we were drawing massive amounts of people. And I'm, like, trying to say, like, say, is there, you know, I'll, I'll profess that that math is, like, you know, that, like, everybody said, like, everybody's always talking about oh, creatives. Uh, I'm like, not, I think it's the way the guys are wrestling. Over the years, compared to the way we used to, that are dry, that is kind of like, it's, wrestling's too busy. I feel vindicated for, right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel yeah. yeah. vindicated, I feel. Well, I'm just saying, Disco, it's just, you, wrestling's gotten very complicated Disco, and busy, and all the guys are in the back before their match, going to their match for two hours and stuff. There, you know, and I'm like, Jesus, I got, you know, it's like, and all the fans are doing this chant, they're doing the same chants every match. Well, we like to chant. You know, Disco, you know, Disco, like, Disco, this is Watch awesome. the match. It's like the, the, the oh, fans yeah, act yeah, like seals, it's like, it's almost like it's like a computer program. Do you believe that just the, running the same responses? And so do you believe yeah. that the psychological approach to pro wrestling that used to be so great back in the day is dead now? It, no, it, no, it's, it's not. just so scripted. It's not There's dead, no, but it's on stifled. life. It's on life support. Right. It's not dead. It's close. There are some it's not guys. Feeling well. The funniest thing about it is you watch guys that get over today and like. They're just do. Their guys are like, oh, this guy would have made money back with us back then too. He would have because he knows the nuances. Of the, stuff, diff- yeah. the difference in now, it's not must see TV. Not at all. Right? It's at your hands at any right. time you want it. Hey, look, 
Raw's on. Nah, I'm gonna go eat a pizza. I'll, yeah. I'll watch it later Wednesday, mm-hmm. yeah. and I'll I'll shoot through later. whatever I want to shoot through. Right. You know, any pay per view you want to see, you can watch it. It's, I used to sit there with my dual VCRs well, back in the Monday right. Night Wars. Right. I gotta right. kind of see and all this. Monday Night for parties. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 People are getting together and watching the show. So it's like so. Yeah. It's like, so when I sit there, and like you know, if if you look at it like that way, yeah. you know uh, that um. Uh, the pro wrestling is just like f- from from a television standpoint, like it's it's uh like what what were you just saying? Um, you you just had a point I want to reiterate. Well, th- that it's oversaturated. Oversaturated, right? So it's like uh, and it's, and today's audience has no uh, patience, right? Well, no, no, he's not talking. Here's put somebody in an onboard. Here comes the CM Punk. Here's the thing: these these, these, these false narratives we have in wrestling. Is yeah. that okay. Oh well, there's so many more platforms you can watch it on now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm sorry. But when Game of Thrones is on, is, is coming on, I, the, the first time it's on, I want to I want to watch it. Yep. You know, like I'm, right. not, I'm not it's waiting. It's must see TV. It's must right. see TV. Yes. I ain't waiting. Sh- if the Walking show is any good, yeah. that's what you would feel like. I can't wait till Monday at eight o'clock yeah. because yeah. it's on. It's just then I can't wait till next week. There's nothing. There's nothing like that these days. You know? I, I gotta tell you the truth. I turn it on. I'm like, I can't wait to fall asleep because that's usually what happens. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh. I put it on. Twenty minutes later, I'm sleeping and I get a good night's rest. Yeah. yeah. And then I call the Farrow. I say what happens, and he gives me. Farrow fills him in because the Mark sat there for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, here's, Miserable. Well, the, the, here's the thing. It's like, it's like people shouldn't have saying they always blame it on the create. You know, they, they blame the booking creator. I'm like, yeah, but they're still well, wrestling on TV, and people the, change the channel when the, the guys are wrestling. Disco. I hear know? that there's 37 writers on today's current WWE. Staff. Too many cooks in the kitchen or what? Too many bad cooks in the kitchen. Uh, okay. Hey, if you had thirty, how many rides, cooks were in the kitchen back in the day? Th- three so, to five. Okay. I challenge but, but, you. But there's you know, three to five I'm guys gonna, that, that had a bunch of ideas. Right. I'm good good challenge. I'm going to challenge you with this question. Okay. So Ooh. yesterday, Scott Hall was in. Scott Hall discussed how he changed the face of wrestling, which mm-hmm. he did. Yeah. yeah. He like uh, sure. I, I lost the name, but he, I could compare him to the free agents. That, Kurt Flood, Kurt Flood of mm-hmm. wrestling. Sure, right? right? He got guys guaranteed contracts, yes, everything else. Yep. Is it fair to say for what Scott Hall did for the industry, he also destroyed the industry too? How? Well, you know, you don't have to work as hard. Now you're telling me um, that these wrestlers aren't performing to the level to keep anyone's attention. No, 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 no. It's not like they're not working hard; they're just working wrong. Okay, they're, they're just physically like, they're, they're, working really hard. I would assume with well, all these crazy pumps and flips. Physically, physically. So, physically. so, physically. so, so there's, there's a lot of physical things that you're doing. When you used to go to a house show, no matter where, wherever you are on a card, you got paid a certain amount of money for the house show, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. These wrestlers now they go to a house show. My belief is they get paid guaranteed money regardless what mm-hmm. happened. Back in the WCW days, they didn't care who came to the arena; they got their money. It didn't matter. You even said to yourself, a smaller crowd, less effort, bigger crowd, bigger effort, right? Yeah, yeah but I mean, if you listen to the crowd, because mm-hmm. the, 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 the crowd was popping. You know what I'm saying? So you, you said you go, I mean, you're not, I don't I don't think it has anything to do with, uh, like, you think the like here's, 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 no, this, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, because that's an unfair, I, yeah, right, 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 I, I wouldn't no, say that, I, that. I, I, would, I would say this, is like, you watch, like, I've been on shows, Right, where is it? And then the, the, the thing today is like everybody's like you know if you're talking about lazy, like everybody thinks work rate is very important. You know, everybody's got to be good. You know, they're doing a lot of stuff. You're working hard and stuff. But but I've been on shows, and this is where like this is where the narratives get all screwed. You know, like who's a good worker? This guy's a great worker. All oh, this guy's the best. I've been on shows where g- g- great workers mm-hmm. went out there for 20 minutes and just did everything in the book, and they they the crowd just did n- nothing. Nothing. The, the you know two more guys go out there try to do everything in book crowds you know nothing the crowd's dead you know mm-hmm. all of a sudden you know fourth match in the show Jim Duggan comes out <laughs> oh and the crowd and the, the, the place just the fans just start coming Goes and they're nuts. going crazy and they're popping for everything right and I'm like you know you guys sit there and talk about what you think like people think good workers or anything I go there's a lot of nice and Jim Duggan was the best guy on the card mm-hmm. because he's the only guy that went out there and got the got the pop sure you know what I'm saying and he didn't do a lot right you know what I'm saying so it's like your your perception of what you think guys should be doing to get reactions from fans is not universal amongst all the fans right there's certain things that fans like that right. other mm-hmm. people don't like so just ultimately what it all comes down to is who gets the biggest and best pops every right. night. Are they responding you know what to And you? what sure. are they doing? Because sure. some of them aren't doing much. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
And to me, it's like I, I, look, at, I look at it from that prism, yeah. and I'm like, what is so difficult here? Right. You know, it's like we're, right. we're trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying right. to make it so complicated. We're trying, but like the simplicity of professional wrestling. Look at Goldberg. The simplicity of this has always been the the, the bread and butter of the business. I believe that. We're, sure. We're, we're the fans. Guys are cutting promos. Talk about wanting to fight each other. Mm. You think it's going to be a fight? They go out and they're knocking each other around and stuff and anything, and and, it's, and it gets it gets reaction. Mm-hmm. These days, it's like it's a performance. The guys are, are art. Spots. It's like you know. And my whole thing is like, okay, if that's what this is, how do I write promos for guys? Right. If that's what you're going to go out there and do, right. You right. know, see <laughs> how how do I write right. a promo for? It's not. A, it's an exhibition. It's it's art. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I promote that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the place where I think wrestling has has pigeonholed itself right now, mm-hmm. and it's in a hole that like and every the, the people that like it like it, and they like they like it with a lot of fervor. You know, the the because this fan base as they've gotten very smart, mm-hmm. as the internet yeah. is fed well, them everything. Smart, but that's go what I'm saying. But, but it's it's developed a crowd but of like you know like how do you like, just, like here's the thing: you're yeah. not going to fill a stadium with fantasy football fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to fill a stadium with fans. You're going to. You need some die-hard fans in the building. Fill the stadiums of people playing video games. Yeah, 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 so so sure. yeah, but it's competition, though. I guess. It's, 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 it's competition, so yeah. <laughs> no, but, right. I guess. Look, social media is very important in every type of business now. Mm-hmm. I, I, I personally almost feel they need the social media, but you know they got to bring some kind of kayfabe back because you know I I can't, not, you got to suspend this belief that I Twitter hate you, wars. but it's, then I see you eating donuts on you, Twitter. It's, it's like it's, it, it's, we could go. I mean, we could do a terrible. whole show on this, but the, but the thing is, is the erosion of the suspension of disbelief over the years, right? And we're at a point right now where there literally is no suspension of disbelief. Maybe just a little bit mm-hmm. with with Brock. Mm-hmm. You certain know, people, so, so, you know, certain, certain people. There's a couple like the, 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 but it's like overall. Because Brock makes you feel like he hates you, no matter what. He or, hates everybody. He 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 he's he's just don't know what he's Or he do. can go off, and yeah. if he's if he's pummeling the guy, and the guy, I think this is ultimately what, what people like what want to see in Brock Lesnar. Okay, is they want to see Brock Lesnar you throwing a guy all over the place, and the guy get pissed off and shoot on him. And see what Brock see what, does to the see Brock I think that's him. ultimately in the fans' yeah. mind. Like when they're watching him wrestle, that's what they are. Yeah, the anticipation. You know, is that right? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like watching I, I, a NASCAR so, race. Right. They're waiting for the wreck. I'm, I'm going to give you two yeah. things. We we speak about this. The Stone Cold what mm-hmm. we felt oh, destroyed yeah. wrestling yeah. in a certain way. That's, you know what? That's <laughs> you know what? That, I'll tell. I'll well, like, talk to Steve one last thing because I got two things for you. Okay, the what, and then Hall and Nash, Michaels. X Pac, the hug at Madison the whole Square Garden with K-Fabe 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 went It kaboom. was good for the moment, but it I ultimately, mi- I missed the days before ultimately, K-Fabe was obliterated. It both hey man, went have ruined the sport to a certain level. Okay, I mean, I'll ag- I'll agree with the first one with Austin because and that's the, that's the worst. That's the one, the one bad. The, you know when you have the positive like check and check 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 checks the yeah. X mark on on Steve Austin's resume. Is bringing that what chain in, but I don't think he knew, he knew that it would like you know that people just hijacked it. Mm-hmm. Who would have known that social media would generate a fan base at live shows of trolls of yeah. people that just want to just troll <laughs> yeah. the show yeah, and just stand, but yeah. you know, like, oh you know, my god, I mean, we didn't we didn't know this landslide. You know? Yep. So, uh, but I, I will say this: the 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 curtain call that no, I, I would I would agree with you if the curtain call was in two thousand one. And the ratings had gone here, had gone down since then. But like well, we saw a tremendous boom but, after the curtain call. But as a so lifelong like, you know, fan, as you said, you were as a, from a, from a kid growing up and loving wrestling. Weren't you just a little disappointed that the curtain had been pulled down? I mean, to me, I, I, I'm not a wrestler, okay. No. But growing up, I loved the fact that hey, this could be real. I, I wish, loved that, I wish and, they and I almost was disappointed to see it obliterated. I wish not they that's just me. I wish they didn't do it. Yeah. Okay, but they did it at a time when. Right. The internet wasn't out there that much. No, yeah. true. The rest of observer true. people knew what they did. The true. crowd of the guard knew what they true. did. I mean, it's a great moment. The guys I'm in not business saying that, knew what they did, but it's like I don't think people yeah. in Albuquerque, New Mexico, knew that they did. They did that, right? That's you know what true. I'm saying? So it's That's like, I mean, too. so I don't think it. Like I said, if it would have been done during a, during a different time, it probably would have accelerated. And yeah. stuff, you know, I, I'm out. There's things. I mean, you want to you want to fast forward. You know, there's things that wrestlers have done. Like, like you could give them like, like we 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 give them a pass these days. 
Yeah. You know, Kenny Omega is like the best guy in the business right now, is a bit that people say, but he wrestled a nine year old girl. Uh, yeah, and everybody well, knows he did, you know, so in front of yeah. people. So, so, so it's like, so same And so, they love him. So, so a, we subjectively you know, yeah, decide what you know do. what I'm saying. So it's all in the, it's we all right. the WWE yeah, yeah. is like the hated child. No matter what they oh, do, it's wrong. Right. Sure. But, you know, they're the Yankees. Joey Ryan can run around and beat you up with his penis, and that's all. That's all. Oh, Yankees, bro. And, you know, we talked about the last AEW event. And look. Not trying to be insulting here, okay? Mm-hmm. But they put a handicapped person in a battle royal. Yeah. Bro, I, and to I, me, not a fan. to me, I'm sorry. I wasn't <laughs> I didn't, happy with this. And then the guy. winner gets to fight for the championship. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I, I'll tell you what. Bro, you guys, <laughs> see, okay, he you, just hammered it. Well, all. No, no, no. no I'm I, outraged. I, let me tell you this. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. see the show. I saw clips. Yeah. Right. Okay. But. This AEW fan base is becoming a very annoying bunch of people. Really? Okay. Do you tell. Know? So it's like, you know. Do tell. Just like and I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Well, they're like. Can we be best friends? Like the new, they're like, <laughs> like, we are. What are you talking they're, about? They're kind of like taking that. It's that New Japan crowd. <laughs> yeah. Where, yeah. Where, Which is a great where, company, where, by where, the way. Where I do we're enjoy saying it. what we're doing is the greatest thing ever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you disagree with us, you're a, a oh, terrible, you're detestable person. Yeah, you're an idiot. What are you thinking? Like, wait a second. You know, so it's like. So this AEW crowd. That they're kind of like that, right? You know, and right. the funniest—I I don't know if you guys have seen this, okay, but or heard this, okay. But I literally laughed out loud probably thirty times in an hour and ten minute period. You've got to listen to Cornette's review of of, oh. the, of, of Double or Nothing. Oh, he's the did you did you hear he's it? The funniest. Starts at the twenty minute mark of the show, and he, he goes just ballistic. got. He, you just got. I mean, he's I, every criticism, every fair criticism of the right. show. He's funny. He's spot on. He's razor sharp. Every fair. Thing that, that was good in the show, he's it's a very uh, honest sure and is. very good criticism. That of course people are gonna look at him. Oh, he's just yeah. it's like no, he's right. I mean right. he's really talking. What makes you say it makes complete sense. But here's the here's the problem with with the AEW, and this is like because everybody's like you know, like the, like this is why this fan base is so annoying. We're changing the world. We're just with that. I'm like wait a second, you gotta <laughs> push the brakes. This you're going on it. You're entering a market right now. Which is not ripe with people watching wrestling. It's like you know, the, the, mm-hmm. I mean, they're entering the, the, the televised market. We're judged tele- the televised market by by Raw, mm-hmm. you know, and the Raw rating is not good. Right, mm-hmm. there's so a fan like, so base, but it right? hasn't. It's not so, transcending right. like so, it did so, back so in the day. So where are we getting? Where are we going to get people to watch our weekly television right. show? You know, right. and but Cornette had a, had a great point. Like you know, that I, I haven't seen the show yet, but this is kind of like you know, like the New Japan crowd, mm-hmm. bro. The crowd, the entire crowd. Mm-hmm. 95, 98 percent of the crowd, twenty five to thirty five year old males, mm-hmm. no kids and no girls. Okay, and then so so, that. so okay, okay so fair. that so these are the people right now that are trying that are telling you they're telling we're us gonna change. I'm they're like, not telling us. I'm like, guys, you got some serious they're not marketing issues. Suggesting. First, they're they're telling telling us. First of all, they're, address, the, you know? they're the minority. Right. The WWE well, that's true. is clearly playing to the next group of. Younger people who yeah, are they gonna are. start to enjoy wrestling. They are. I don't, they don't care I, well, about hence the, the new day t shirts. Well, they need to. No they need, let me tell you why they, they do need, need us. Let me tell you I why agree. they need to. This is, why, this is where WWE is failing. Okay. okay. Yeah. This, is, this is the most fascinating Lay number. If you want metrics, this is the most fascinating metric that you'll, you'll hear. This is what's happened to wrestling. It's, and, and to me, it's, I'm, I'm a metrics guy. I play fantasy sports and stuff. I'm, I'm the real, fantasy football. I, DFS and yeah, I'm just I'm really the, the, I, I like the numbers. I like playing the numbers, right? Yeah, beautiful. Sure. This is the most. This is all the number you need to know. Okay. In 2001, the median age of the professional wrestling fan. That's the median age. So the people that don't know median, that's the middle mm-hmm. half the people on this side, half the people on this mm-hmm. side. The median age of professional wrestling is 27 years old. I believe it. What do you think it is now? It's 40 something. I think it's 46. Last time I looked. 52? It's 52. Okay. 52. Okay. So your median age in 20, 19 years has shifted tw- to 25 years. So I'm sitting there looking That's like, wow, you're not really getting new fans. I go, literally, your fan base is dying. But this, but see, okay, you know, so man, but, the, but you're that playing number, into what I just said to okay, you. Yeah. They understand that the 52-year-old is their fan. They need... These fifty-two-year-olds are going to be dead. But that's so guess what? Can we, we slow down? down but, but and I got at least a the couple of decades. That's my point, what though, but that's why I disagree with you because they, they haven't. Right. Like if they, that's what they're if that's what they're trying to do. That ain't working. But we do see kids. Like, you know, it's like the, this number is still. But, but we do my, see kids in the WWE audience. We do. Right, right. We do. We see we see kids. Okay? okay. So it's like you know we see girls. With their new day cereal. And, you know. Here's the thing. Wrestling the product today is there's there's no set there's not as much sex appeal as it used to be. There's none. Okay. To where like these fans. Mm-hmm. Can't you're not bring, having a product that you can take your girlfriend to? Mm-hmm. 
Because she's like, she's but, look at her. She, she, she doesn't like, she don't, she don't want to watch matches but, and rate the look, matches. And stuff, you know, you know what I'm saying? Seriously, that, that, I mean, but it's I'm, a dome. Well, 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 honey, was that a three either. and a half or a four star match? Kids don't, Shut kids up. don't it's either. a different you know? audience, though. You're right. talking about a that's group of people that will fill Madison Square Garden to watch people play video yeah, games. That's, yeah, and that's you'll be, I, I guarantee your metrics would probably be with the NFL, baseball. Everything the athletics is it's it's starting to slip away. We're into this computerized I technology. I am wondering about it. It seems like all the major sports their ratings are dropping. I don't know if society. Nah, can I, 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 you I know, wonder. Some, some of them are, but some of them, you you can just feel why they're dropping though sometimes because the product isn't. You know, this is it's a, TV is a star driven business. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So like 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 this year's the NBA playoffs. It just felt. Jesus, we've gone right. through two months now. LeBron wasn't in these. That's right. right. You know, it's like right. you know, I bet you. I bet you weird, asked you know, ten people. Like, right. There's not as much because because every, every day right. on ESPN they're LeBron. following LeBron's yeah. journey yeah. through yeah. the day. I'm like, wow, we just yep. missed all. You know, so yeah. so, so well, sports we, is star we, driven. But we also yeah. spoke about that Vince with the WWE decided at some point. I don't know Vince Triple H, whoever it doesn't matter. Said, I'm not making stars anymore. The company will be the star. There'll be no one bigger than this company. Because where is some John, of the things where is John Cena's that, that, replacement? Where's the next? Here's the thing. This, this exactly. is what I'll say: is that, um, is you you need that next. You need to find those guys, right? Where is okay. He? But they're, and they're they're not there, okay. And I think Vince Vince McMahon, he's kind of the you know, as he's gotten older, he's getting out of touch with with you know culture. Like what's up? Sure, you know, what's it feels like it. Yeah, right. It but feels like it. Ultimately, it's like Vince doesn't feel there's that guy in his roster either, which is why we haven't seen anybody treated like that. That's why keep okay. getting Lesnar. Okay, that's right. So it's exactly that's why they keep 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 keeping keep Lesnar. They're bringing in so, old guys. So it's like the guys that Vince feels could be the next guy. This is a 73 year old man, you know, something. He's ignored that, like in this culture day. Bro, your fans are detesting these people that you're trying to push into these spots. Did, did Vince McMahon did, did, make know. a mistake regarding CM Punk? Uh, mm. I'll, I'll say this: is that um, Punk Punk was great for this fan base, mm-hmm. okay? Yes. Yes. For this fan base. Yes. But Punk wasn't going to get you one. Punk. The, here's here's the math. This is what people don't realize. Is you like CM Punk? I love wrestling. Oh, Punk and everything. You know what? We're, you're not even including in the math the amount of people that look at that guy and say that like, he looks like my refrigerator. Thank you, thank you. And we're turning the That's show. That's him. And we're tu- well, you know, you I know, love Punk here, here's personally, the thing. Here's but the thing. you don't you know. hear the voices of the people that quit watching. That's right. Right. They're, they they they're like um. They, they like disappear. You know the it's, Homer Simpson like, thing where they disappear into the, like the, the bushes. You know they're, they're they're gone. So all you hear are the fans lost that are sales. watching the product. Lost yeah. sales. You don't, right. You don't know about so, lost sales. You don't how know about, about lost sales. So wait, how about so the you, staying power wait, wait, though? Wait. Years later, they're still chanting this man's name because, because so, so, this for the fa- the fans. Are, there's that, just a collection. It's themselves. not. Here's here's the thing people yeah. don't realize. It's like we we try to extrapolate like you know the the pain. it doesn't take a lot of fans to start a chant yeah, that is for right. sure right? Okay, you get six sure. or seven guys that who just start doing sure. this you know you got 5,000 people yeah, in the herd chimes so, so in. all you need at the show and each live show has this and this this is why it's so difficult at WWE today and like to, to, to write TV mm-hmm. is that, that when the trolls show up you're writing television. Yeah. You have no clue how the fans are going right. to react to the stuff that you have. Yeah, you're going to visual picture the fan response and a collection of fans that, ah, we're going to shit on well, this. And well, they wait, ruin it. So you, know you, 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 you had a great point. It's like, so Vince has kind of lost touch. So, you know, he keeps trying to force things down their throats. But then when he finally gives in and, and puts a guy like Kofi Kingston, puts a strap yeah. on Kofi Kingston, doesn't work either. No, the fans horrible, wanted it. Horrible. They wanted it. And here's nothing thing, went about it. I thing. look at Punk this, as this, much more, you know, here's, here's the problem. Kofi. That's way more believable than Kofi. Hey, these fans, oh. these fans don't know how what, what needs to be done to draw money in wrestling. And Vince doesn't either. Mm. Okay? This, you have so, the, this, so this is what we have. We have two competing enemies. They'll argue with each other. But neither of them has the right formula, mm-hmm. so it's like you've got you got a it's like you've got a fight going on, and it's like both boxers have one hand tied behind their back. You know, they're trying to, they, right. and that's what you're looking at right now because neither of them has a clue what needs to be done. Everybody has ideas, every but the only idea you're getting is the one that Vince McMahon likes. They're so high okay? on their own ideas, so they like, don't want to hear anybody. You, you have writing. writing experience. What would Disco Inferno do to fix today's WWE product? 
Oh God, this is just. I know it's. I know it's a. I I change. Here's here's the one thing I would. Here's the one thing I would do. Okay, okay? I would. And uh, to me, it's not. I I don't think the writing is a major part of the problem. Really? I honestly, I think that I'll I'll tell you what. And this, this is the first thing I would change. Okay, number one. All right, go back to 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 when we're wrestling in matches to throwing punches. Mm-hmm. Okay, these forearms look ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They look silly. Slapping Nobody sells it. Yeah. It looks fake. Mm-hmm. And everybody's doing it. And mm-hmm. it's not safe. You do. You, no. you, you screw one doesn't up. Look you're it. getting your concussion again. Doesn't look okay? it. Right. It looks at, and nobody sells it. Okay, go back to throwing punches. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and go back to simulating, like, let's look like we're fighting in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about, when you, hit, the, how about the when you hit someone's finisher? They stay down. They stay down. They get yeah. down. That brings, like, bro, the funniest thing is, like, the, 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 like, the psychology of matches is today. Gone. Here's the psychology of matches. Yeah. Nothing hurts. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. That's how can I buy into this? Right. Every match. Right. Nothing hurts. Right. Because we're kicking out of literally everything. Okay? Mm-hmm. Get back to the simplicity of professional wrestling, and when you're back to the simplicity of professional wrestling, Amen. then your character... Gets you have to portray your character wow. to the people more. Would Disco the take the guys. handcuffs off the wrestlers regarding their promos? Can they do their own? Can the they be their can, own men? Please. Here's the thing: the, the, the per example, I went, when I went back and did the Impact stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. um, Jimmy Jacobs is one of the, one of the writers there. Okay, and, and you know he came from WWE, so I was just under the assumption that this guy's probably uh, that he's probably one of those crappy WWE writers, right? So th- they had given they given me some 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 stuff, mm-hmm. right? And they were doing good lines, mm-hmm. and I, you, you know, hey, I, I like that. Okay, all right, let me go do that and go there. And so he wrote it for me. Mm-hmm. I like this. Let me do. It worked. Right, right. If he'd give me stuff I didn't like, I would say, "What about this?" Okay. So you've got writers that write some good stuff. Okay, those are the writers that need to you need to focus on. Mm-hmm. Okay, the writers that when a wrestler goes out there and he's been given written material and his promo stinks. It's like either the wrestler just is not confident enough Didn't stand in up. his own ability that he went out there and made himself and let himself look like a schmuck by saying it, as opposed to like say, hey, what about this? Mm-hmm. Okay, or, or the writer basically just you know that's not a good writer. Or okay, so so it's like so what I'm saying is like there's a good just it, wrestling has always been a collection of ideas. Yeah, but couldn't the point yeah. be that or the wrestler says, "I'm getting paid. Give me what you want, and I'll do it." As do long they as I have a paycheck, now? do they even? I don't. I don't care. Care? Uh, do they, they don't. Just read the line? Let, me, let me let me be honest with you. Okay, you you look at some of the, these guys in WWE is like you know you can count the amount of good promos in the past six Wait. months of TV on five fingers. Oh, sad, oh, okay. sad, sad but so, true. So my whole thing is like you know what what if we're just in an era of guys? Here, here's the problem: we're in an era. Where guys just as they were coming up in professional wrestling, just concentrated so much on wrestling. work and stuff and everything, never really concentrated on in front of the mirror cutting promos. So and what's stuff more important? So, so we have an era of guys that just go out there and just are doing all this, and then when it's time to stop and talk, they don't really know what to say. So what's more important? Mike or Matt? But the mic. Yeah, the, yeah. This is, it's the most common sense. I'll, say, I'll t- tell people this: this is the most simplistic formula in professional wrestling. Okay, a five star match. Has never ever in the history of professional wrestling drawn a dime. Ne- it never has. You know why? Because all the dimes were drawn before the matches took place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, they got the build what up. you did before the match. The got the up. money for people going. Right. Now here's your match. Right. right. Okay. So it's like the five star match. Unless they're paying when the show's over. You know, they, right, they don't right. say you know, but like, yeah. but the mm-hmm. matches were the dimes have been drawn before the match takes place. So you tell me what's the most important thing: the actual match mm-hmm. or drawing the dimes? The build. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, yes, of course. The you know, it's like the spoke of the, is which any? is why I look at Dusty Rhodes. Okay. You think Dusty Rhodes would have been anything in this in this day and age of press Bro, Probably they would have ran out of the bed. Oh, he can't do nothing. Dude, right. you know, we talk about it all the time. We used to see Morocco Backlund. Yeah. And they would spend a lot of times in an arm bar. One of the greatest matches that I've ever seen. Yeah. They would get booed out of the building. Yeah. Right now. You would get booed out of the building. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. honestly, I honestly think... Uh, that that style back, but the, here's the thing: styles change over the course as sure. the, as the suspension disbelief erodes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's yeah. like we, yeah. you know, back then, eighty percent of the crowd thought it was real. Yeah, right. You know, let's go forward the Attitude Era. Thirty percent of the crowd right. thought, thought it was real, but said you know, said, said, but but, right. but they're kind of. But wait you know, a minute, in the Attitude Era, though, they did even though I knew it was fake, one they did stuff that goes. Wait a minute, they is this did real? do stuff. But, that, but, but, but doesn't matter. The, the emphasis was on characters, you know, right. and sure. the things they did on the show, sure. like over the top. Sure. Yeah, that, that's what I want. I want you to get a question in, in but yeah. I got one question I'd like you to answer. Who killed WCW? Russo, Bischoff, Hogan, Nash. 
All of the above? No, no, nobody. There, nobody there was, killed no, it? Was, it was, listen, Someone here's the thing. <laughs> the, the executives of Time Warner want to get rid of it. Okay, oh, and they, okay. There was so just, Time Warner they, they killed it. They were looking for a spot to do it. They would have done it even if it would have been successful. But like, really? but, but it shows you right now, that this is what I would have said, You mm. know, but back in 2000, 2001, if you would have told those guys at Time Warner, you know, hey, you know, we, we can do a 1-5 rating and still be a profitable business in 2018 years from now. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they're like, oh, well, well, why would we get rid of this? You right. Know? So they, but they, which is why maybe they're getting back into it. Right. Is they're they looking are. at Vince right. McMahon, it's like, Jesus, it, the, the ratings stink, but... He's making he's still money. Making money. Yeah. Right, right. 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 So, so, so they're like, so they're right. saying like, hey, all right, this is good enough for programming for us, you know, and everything, but like, but this whole thing of like, the wrestling's going through another boom period. It's like, nah, not until... There's a lot of things you got to change. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of old school principles that people can't just... Um, uh, what, discard. What, dis, dis, discard. Discard, right? yeah. That we need to bring back. And you people think like... like it's like, wait a second. You know, you need to draw ratings. You need to get... If you want a boom period, you got to get those people that like the yeah. stuff that, 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 that... That like the stuff that you're not doing. You, you know, out there. So it's like, you know... Strangers as it may sound to some of his haters, do you think the business could use another Vince Russo? Absolutely. There you go. Okay. Let me tell you, this is the biggest thing. I've worked with Vince, mm-hmm. okay? And I'll say that everybody that tries to bury Vince, they do. He, he, what his whole theory was. I kind of like him. <laughs> his whole, his whole theory of, of writing is, we're just trying to get as many people to watch the show as possible. Yeah, so sure. I'm going to have to sacrifice to some of my hardcore fans. Fresh I'm going to have to TV. do some stuff yeah. that might get this collection of people to watch. Right. You know, and that, that's all it is, right? right but right. the one thing I'd like the, the people like try to do discount Russo, bro, just go watch a show, a Vince Russo show and watch a show today. Watch the pre-tapes. Because mm-hmm. Vince is producing most of the pre-tapes. Mm-hmm. And you watch the pre-tapes back then and you watch it now and it's like, well, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? I mean, this, this guy's like, he's not, he's, he's writing their promos but he's letting them change and stuff. Like that. But but you just look at the, the promos when when Vince was in charge and look at promos back you know, when, when guys are in charge and it's just, it's night and day. Yep. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like you can sit there and bury the guy, but I've worked with the guy. Mm-hmm. I know how he works. And the and the thing is, there's, there's a collection of people that like that have driven this narrative, the Vince Russo and anything, and they have readers and followers, so they create a base of people that like sure. you know have said the same. But but like most of the people that have worked with Vince knows what he does because he's pro- he's produced these guys, mm-hmm. you know, and they know how the the effort he puts into trying to produce them and help and trying to get them over. Did you ever get to meet Vince McMahon? Just curious. No, have you ever never, ever come across him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Never. Glenn, a uh, fan, Andy Nichols asked. Uh, What's up, Andy? Can you address your involvement in the Impact Knockouts division? Nice. Can I address it? Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's um. It, th- this is what I find fascinating about pro wrestling is that is that it's very to me. This fan base, mm-hmm. okay, is is. As easy to trigger as any fan as, as any fan base has ever been. <laughs> oh yeah! Okay? Oh my god! <laughs> and all you have to do, okay, is just maintain part of your part of what people think is really you, okay, on social media. So they think that, that they see enough of things you say and something to think like, oh, that's what he's real. That that's what that's, that's what really this guy him. is. They draw a conclusion. They draw. And here and, and this is funny too. All you, you the one thing here's here's the one thing to get people to hate you. Okay, get fans <laughs> I'm of this taking notes, you. man. Go just, on. Just put a couple tweets out talk to talk about how they hate Trump's doing a good job. Oh yeah, no, I'm not Jim. We got. No, 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 I'm but, not but, touching but, that. But trust me. I listen, 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 this, listen. I this. refuse. Just tweet that. Ow! But here's the thing. Tweet that. <laughs> Right. And you watch the responses. Oh my God! People no! People think you're like you know like a horrible person for like you know, it's okay. So I'm like, okay, this girl, you're like, a horrible but, person. But, but here's the thing, that's perfect, right? Because right. okay, if I'm gonna be a heel, that's all right, true. I've gotten under some people's skin. You know, the, the king of heels. Some people that's are coming true. to the show. Per, my oh, Twitter yeah. they personally don't like me because they think I'm horrible. So I so as I've done the impact stuff. It should have been so simple to get get response from the crowd. Right. It's just right. it's been so easy to get heat, and I just can't believe mm-hmm. that a lot of wrestlers today don't realize how easy it is. Right. Okay. Right. You have to maintain your persona. Yeah. If you're going to be on TV, you can't compromise yourself and show pictures of you. You know. You know. You, you, you can't yeah. be tweeting. Uh, you know, picture of you and your mom on Mother's Day having a great time. Yeah. You can't talk about your you and your opponents are hugging each other. Yeah. You can't Eating do donuts. that. Yeah. You can't do that. I you have something. to like just just have people because of your your presence is all over the place. You have to kind of mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. stay sort of in character almost all all the time right. if you do, if you want to do this. Glenn, yeah. I got well, I got one minute, Jim. Make it a good question, and don't ask we him where you. he had his underwear made. All right? <laughs> Would you please? <laughs> oh, what do you These got? Two. What do you got for Glenn? Okay, so um, let's talk ribs. <laughs> okay, um, best rib you've ever seen anybody pulled, or funniest rib you've seen, been a part of, anything like that? Well, rib the, stories. Well, the rib stories always just go straight to Kurt Henning. <laughs> yes, because Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Henning was was the Perfect. guy. He was always the guy that was, do, was pulling the ribs, but he would be the guy that he'd do the rib, and then he'd be the guys like. Hey, we got to help. A perfect example. Kidman, he, Kidman's uh, pants went missing one day. All right? <laughs> That's a problem. Kurt Henning's like, draft hey, guys, here. we got to find Wait. Kidman's pants. Let's go find Kidman. Have anybody seen Kidman's pants? You know, so, we're like, all right, Kurt, we get it. You know, you hit his pants. Yeah, But he was like, all those guys, like the Nasty Boys and Henning and all those guys, they were like that. They were searching they high would and do low the ribs, for those pants. But then right. they'd sell, like, you know, <laughs> oh, we're so concerned about the other. I mean, it was, it was, and it was so obvious. So where were the too. pants? Like, where were I, they? I don't know. Just, like, Kim had to go, but Kevin had the blue the blue things. And so one day he had to go yeah. with, with black. He had to take some black jeans and cut them and put them in. So he had to go. Uh, so did you ever see a rib where you were like, that's wrong? Did you ever see him taking advantage of someone? I thought that was wrong. Well, I mean, like. Oh, gee, yeah, I mean, come on. I've heard a lot of Fuji rib stories. Like, you know, really, really ridiculous. bad. You know, <laughs> but right, I've been bad. Look, we want to thank you for joining our show. Absolutely. This was an incredible interview. Well, and uh, look, we're best friends now. Thank you. Right, cool. We are. <laughs> we feel better. <laughs> okay. All right. This has been another episode of Lions, number one pro wrestling broadcast. Eric, you want to jump in two seconds? Because i got to get the Evan Ginsberg show on. And I'm already over time. All right. It's no BS. It's your cult hero. It's ESS. And uh, one more uh, stop on the tour, the world-famous ESS tour this weekend. And we're going to be at the Wrestling Universe uh, from 3 to 5 today. That's over in uh, Queens, New York. And uh, Disco's going to be there. And Billy Jack and a bunch of other great superstars are going to be there. And uh, anybody that knows where the Wrestling Universe is in Queens, New York, go there. You know, because it's a good time. And Jack's a great guy. And, uh, Beautiful. You know, and um, for all the updates on ESS and who's coming in, www.esspromotions.com. And remember, no BS with ESS. Nice. All right, I want to thank uh, Eric Sims, Jim Phillips from the Gorilla Position. Thanks Catches so well. articles every week. Incredible writer. Great. And most importantly, I want to thank uh, Disco Inferno for thank coming you. on the Monty and the Faro Show. We'll catch you next Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. From me and the Faro, have a good day. Later. Peace. Man has already won. Oh, my mind.